This is weird, I have no idea what this is gonna look like, but I am right now currently vlogging on the XL1. What's up guys, my name is Mark, and this is my Minolta 50mm f1.7 vintage lens review. Although this, this lens technically isn't vintage, I think this one is from like the 1990s, so it's kind of like millennial, it's a millennial lens. It's the millennial lens. That's my title, 50mm f1.8, millennial lens. Oh yeah. So this is the Minolta MD 50mm f1.7 SLR lens. While Minolta has been making lenses for decades, this little slice is a millennial, so to speak. Born in the not too distant 1990s. It's small and light and mostly made of metal and glass. The only plastic on the lens is in the aperture ring. Let me just check that. Yeah, that's plastic. Now it's made up of six multi-coated elements in five groups and has an aperture range between f1.7 to f22 with full stop clicks at f1.7, 2.8, 16, and 22 and half stop clicks between f2.8 to f16. It has a 45 millimeter filter thread and a close focusing distance of 1.5 feet or 0.45 meters. The focus throw is a full 180 degrees and the rubberized grip on the focus ring is actually quite nice feeling. I've actually got the Fotazi MD2L adapter here and they're not available in Canada for some reason. I had this one smuggled in because I'm a pirate. So I'm shooting this lens on my S1H. Now before I go out and do some shooting, it's time for some vintage lens files. Now Minolta was first established in Osaka, Japan in 1928. Now, although it wasn't called Minolta back then. It was called this. I'll butcher the word if I even try to say it, so I'm not gonna do that. The term does translate to Japanese-German camera shop. How practical. Now three years later in 1931, it would adopt its final name, Minolta, which is actually an acronym. Mechanism, Instruments, Optics, and Lenses by Tassima. Minolta. In 1937, the company produced Japan's second twin lens reflex camera. And in 1947, introduced the Minolta 35 rangefinder. It wasn't until 1958 when the first SLR cameras started making an appearance. The Minolta SR2. Now the term Roker is commonly used when referring to Minolta lenses. And this was the name chosen by Minolta founder, who drew inspiration from Mount Roko in Japan, which is located near the Minolta factory. So with all that now out of the way, let's see what this lens can do. First photo walk of 2021, and Mother Nature made it quite memorable. There's nothing quite like the forest in the winter, especially when it's snowing. It's quiet, peaceful, and I freaking love it. But just getting out and shooting is ultimately why I love photography. It's the experience. It's a great way to get out and try to see things from a slightly different perspective. Now overall, it's a fairly sharp lens. Now that sharpness is compromised slightly wide open at f1.7. Contrast levels are acceptable at this aperture as well, with minimal haze present in the frame. Now stopping down to f2.8, the sharpness and contrast improve dramatically, and that minimal hazing is gone. The optimal performance of this lens seems to be anywhere between f4 and f8, with excellent sharpness corner to corner. Our typical vignetting is present wide open at f1.7, but disappears by f2.8. And the color is fairly good straight out of the camera. It's pretty flat today, so it's tough to really judge, but they definitely pop. 
You can always push more color in or dial it back with modern photo editing as well, so not sure how significant this is. Now, chromatic aberrations are only really observed in very high contrast areas and when shooting wide open. This might have been the only shot I really observed them in, but for the most part, they're very nicely controlled. Now, the bokeh is nice and circular at f1.7. Stopping down, highlights in the background will become hexagonal as the lens uses six non-rounded blades in its aperture design. Now, like most full-frame lenses, you'll see some cat-eye effect in the highlights at the edges of the frame. Now, interestingly enough, when you compare this shot to the one taken with the Meyer Optic Gurlitz 50mm, you start to see some of the unique characteristics between the lenses. The Minolta has much more warping in the bokeh at the edges than the Meyer lens does. Now, despite the wonderful weather, it didn't make for a very dynamic testing ground. Exposing in the snow is also a bit tricky as the snow tends to mess with your exposure meter. The only editing I really did in these images was to get the exposure under control as best I could. Now since I have the Contax Carl Zeiss version of this lens, the 50mm f1.7, I thought it might be interesting to do a little friendly comparison between these two lenses in a more controlled setting. Now, the first thing I wanted to illustrate with these two shots is the minimum focusing distance. The Minolta can get closer at 0.45 meters, while the Contax Carl Zeiss needs to be pushed back a bit further at 0.6 meters. Now, wide open at f1.7, the center sharpness on the Contax Zeiss lens is a bit cleaner. Both lenses have vignetting in the corners, and the bokeh in the background is relatively circular. Now the bokeh on the Minolta is a bit softer here because I'm physically closer to the lens with that closer minimum focusing distance. Now stopping down a bit, you'll see with both lenses, the vignetting disappears and the center sharpness improves. Now the corner to corner sharpness wide open on the Zeiss lens is a bit better. Now I found this shot a little tougher to distinguish the differences between the two. There's a slight color variation where the contact Zeiss seems to be a shade warmer. Now when you zoom in, you can see there's a bit of fringing on the Minolta lens that's not present on the Contax Zeiss image. Now this could be due to the much hyped T-Star coatings, but I'm not 100% sure. Now I just ordered some testing charts, so that might make these comparisons a little more obvious and a little more scientific. Now the real value of this lens is in its price. You can find one anywhere between $30 to $60 online, but you might be able to find them cheaper. So even still, it's a very affordable lens. Consider it. Pretty sure you won't be disappointed. Now the Nifty 50 is one of the most versatile focal lengths on a full frame camera, and you can shoot pretty much anything with it. So even if you're on the edge of buying your first vintage lens, this is definitely one to consider based on its value. All right guys, well that does it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on how this lens did and how it compared to the much more expensive Contax Carl Zeiss 50. Thanks as always for watching and see you next time. This is the Minolta MD 50mm f 1.7 lens review, B cam, take one, A cam, take one.